we have some equivalent statements, some statements equivalent to the properties that we've seen. Okay, so for f of x equals x squared, and in fact for any function where f of x is always equal to f of negative x, we can say for every point on the graph of that function, its reflection through the y-axis is also on the graph. Now what do we mean by the reflection through the y-axis? We simply mean there's a point here on the graph. We move, okay, if the y-axis is a mirror and you're standing here looking into the mirror, what do you see? You see your reflection as if it's on the other side of the mirror. And that reflection is at a distance from the mirror that's equal to your distance from the mirror. So your reflection looks twice as far away as you are from the mirror. But the main thing is, if you're here, you see your reflection as if it's over here with the mirror halfway in between. The reflection is straight across because the mirror is vertical. The reflection always has to go at a right angle to whatever is reflecting it. So that every point here has its reflection and its reflection is on the graph. <coughs> and of course we could project down here and get an x value for this point. We get an x value for this point and these x values would be equal and opposite. And the y values of course would be equal since we went across here perpendicular to the y axis. We didn't go any higher or lower a reflection is at the same distance from the x-axis as it was before and on the same side. Okay, this is what we mean by the reflection. So we can say that, well, every point on one side is, has its reflection on the other. So we're going to say um, that the graph on one side is the reflection of the graph on the other side. Another way to say the same thing is to say that the graph is symmetric with respect to the y-axis. Here's the y-axis. The graph is the same on this side as it is on this side. If we were to uh, fold the graph over on the y-axis, so fold this side over onto this side, uh, this half of the graph would be right on top of this half. The two would coincide. So we say that there's a symmetry and that the y-axis is the axis of symmetry. So I could say here that the y-axis is the axis of symmetry. In this case we say that f is what we call an even function. An even function is one that's symmetric with respect to the y-axis. It's one for which f of x and f of negative x are equal. And we can understand why we might call it an even function. The x squared function, um, 2 is an even number. If you take x to an even number, you'll always get a graph that's symmetric with respect to the y-axis. A graph for which every point on this side has its reflection on the other side, and the reflection's on the graph. Okay, so that's what we mean by an even function. <coughs> by contrast, for the x cubed function, f of x was equal to the negative of f of negative x. Now you can actually kind of work this out. Uh, if I take the point the x equals 2 point and the x equals negative 2 point, and I connect them with a straight line, that straight line goes through the origin, doesn't it? Okay, so in this sense we can say, well, if there's a mirror at the origin pointed, you know, at, at, at this angle so that it would uh, reflect this point right back to itself, then the reflection through the origin would be here. The point that appears to be uh, you know, the point in the mirror, uh, the reflection of this point would appear to be down here. So this point is the reflection of this. And we can say here then 
that in this case for every point in the graph the reflection through the origin is on the graph. So, so if we have a point here we can reflect it through the origin. We just move to the origin and then we move an equal distance along the same line on the other side of the origin and we get the reflected point. And they have equal and opposite y values and equal and opposite x values. We can say then that the midpoint of the line segment from the point to its reflection is the origin. And we could actually, if we put this in symbols, uh, we could do a fundamental triangle between um, negative x, negative f of negative x, and x, f of x for this particular function. We plug in the cubing function and we determine that the midpoint of the segment uh, that joins those two points would be the origin. Now you probably won't understand completely what I said, but just uh, keep in mind the fundamental triangle can be used to prove this property. Okay, another way to say it then is that the graph is symmetric with respect to the origin. And another equivalent statement is <coughs> that this function f of x, the x cubing function, is odd. And odd kind of corresponding to the fact that if it's a power function, it's going to be an odd power. If it's an odd power, you're going to have this. Uh, if it's an even power, you're going to have symmetry with respect to the y-axis. If it's an odd power, you have symmetry with respect to the origin. So there's a lot here. Um, the fundamental idea is if f of x is always equal to f of negative x, all these things hold. You have symmetry with respect to the origin. Uh, you have an even function. Every point in the graph has its reflection through the y-axis, and the y-axis is the axis of symmetry. Okay. If f of x is negative f of negative x, illustrated by this example, then for every point, of, well, all, all these things hold. Every point in the graph has its reflection through the origin, and that reflection is on the graph. Um, and that's equivalent to saying the midpoint of the line segment between the point and its reflection is the origin. We say that the graph is symmetric with respect to the origin. The function is odd.